What's up, wilderness athletes? Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I'm Steven from Elevation Fitness Training, and today on Wild Skills, I want to go over foam rolling, why it's important, when we need to be using it, and why everyone else isn't doing it. So before we get started, let's talk a little bit about what is foam rolling? So let's say in the last 10 years, you've gone to the gym, you've gone in and you've warmed up. You've gotten on a spin bike, a treadmill, an elliptical, whatever that may be. You look over as you're warming up and you see this guy or gal rolling around in this cylindrical object covered in foam, right? And they have some crazy grimace on their face. There's nothing about it that advertises fun to you. Um, the reason that happens is, is because our bodies, when we train, um, if we are inactive too long, if we're overactive, okay, if we're overusing our muscles and our bodies, the connective tissue gets bundled up. It's called fascia. So fascia is a connective tissue that wraps around your muscles and, and bundles them and keeps them in a, a certain form and shape in a, in a range of motion. Take a, um, a band, an elastic band. Okay, a resistance band even, tied in a knot in the middle. And you can use that whole band as much as you want. You can stretch it, it's pliable in 90% of those areas, except for that knot that you've created. That knot is, it will not allow that piece of the muscle or the fascia to release or get the benefits from the exercise or movements or range of motion that the rest of the tissue around it is getting. So I hope you guys enjoy this, hope you get a little bit from it, and uh, it gets you to jump on a foam roller. So let's jump down on the floor and see how this all works. So there's a lot of different options. Um, as you can see, we've got foam rollers that are just a big cylindrical Sometimes they're PVC, sometimes they are a polymer. Typically they're all wrapped in foam. And you can see some have different patterns. We've got this one. Uh, we call this one the baby fist because when you roll over it, it's like a hundred little baby fists working the knots out of your muscles. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, they're performing the same purpose. Their function is the same. They just come in different shapes and sizes. There's a couple. We've also got some smaller, more trigger point style foam rollers like this guy here. Courtney and I run a lot and we hike a lot. And so we like to make sure that we get those hard to reach spots. And that could be your adductors, could be your calves, could be your piriformis and all these different stuff. And we'll go over that um, here shortly. We've also got really cool tools like this trigger point ball here. And they come in many different sizes. And so I just grabbed two of them that we have. Um, this is one actually that I like to roll my feet on and um, the slightly bigger one it works really good to get inside of the calves, behind the knee, that kind of stuff where you can really drive your weight into it and roll it around. The first thing I want to talk about is how to choose a foam roller. So if you've never done it and we can re-explore what I was saying earlier about that guy or gal when you were warming up and they were rolling and it was just, oh, it looked horrible. <laughs> so what happens is if your body is not acclimated to foam rolling, and you've got all this stored up energy, it can be painful. You can get on a foam roller like this guy here and it can ruin your life. So if you were to go and touch the stove and the stove is hot, are you probably gonna go touch it again or are you gonna learn a little bit about it, maybe how to navigate it, turn it off and then go touch it. So we're just going to use that as our foam rolling analogy. So if, if you don't have any experience or you've never foam rolled, you probably don't want to jump on something like this. It's pretty aggressive, it's pretty hard, and it's got these knots all over the top of it, um, which probably won't be very friendly to you. So we can use something more like this open cell foam foam roller. Foam, imagine that it's foam. Um, this is much softer, okay? And if this is too big, you can cut it in half. That's the beauty of these. So um, in the past, I've just taken a big foam roller, cut it in half, cut it into thirds, and just left them in different parts of the house. Uh, we take ours outside. We use them in all kinds of um, situations. We travel with them. So this would be a foam roller that I would recommend somebody who has never had any experience foam rolling and may have a lot of dysfunction in their muscles because this is gonna be a little bit more user-friendly, softer. Uh, it's a little bit bigger so you can climb around on it. 
Um, so that would be my recommendation. So let's get into next how all this even works. Okay, so the first one that we're going to do is the, we're going to use the big open cell foam roller just to lead by example here. So we're going to move these guys out of the way. And then I like to start at the top of my body and work down. Now if I just got done with a long run or a, a big weighted hike or a, a heavy lower body exercise, I'll start with my glutes, um, go to my hamstrings and roll around and I just have a kind of a very flowing routine. Um, I don't really enjoy hitting a certain body part and then moving to another body part, you know, from like calves to back because there's no flow there. I like to spend my time on the foam roller. I like to enjoy it, but at the same time, I want it to be efficient. So the way I do that is I set my foam roller up here and I'll focus on my upper back like so. You'll notice that my butt has space between it and the floor. We don't really want to be here because now that puts a, an extended pressure on your spine and you're not using your body weight to put pressure on the muscles. Okay, so what I like to do, and I have a big head, so to hold that up and not create pressure on my neck, I'll put my hands like so. What I'm trying to accomplish, okay, is I will start this up towards my shoulder blades, I'll hold my head up without pulling on my neck too much, and I'll just roll back and forth using my legs, keeping my core somewhat tight, and keeping this integrity consistent, so I don't let no saggy butts here, right? Keep my butt high. I keep my legs engaged so they can push and pull me back. Now, I don't go the entire length of my back. I instead will use small segments and really focus on a certain muscle group, or at least a portion of that muscle group. So after I get done with that area, and at the same time, this could take a minute and a half, it could take five minutes, it all depends. So I don't really like to say, use three minutes on this muscle group. Because that muscle group may need a lot more time than that, it might not need much time at all. So I'll spend the time necessary to get what I feel is a release or it's not painful anymore. Okay, that's kind of the key here. Um, so then what I'll do is I'll transition from that area and I'll just sit up and just move this down a little bit, okay? When you're at your lower back or your lumbar spine, the most important thing to consider is to not let your upper body fall to the ground because now we've got a really heavy curvature pressure on your lumbar spine or your lower back, which probably isn't that good, right? So I'll hold my head again and I'll just explore the small range of motion from my mid-back to my low-back. I'll just roll back and forth here. You don't want to really go too fast because you want to explore every little bit of that muscle group. So moving from the lower back, I'll go down into my glutes. How I do that is I'll sit up and I'll just sit my butt right on the foam roller. Now, when I start my glutes, I'll tend to roll over to one side. I like to have all of my body weight on the glute, okay? So I'm not really spreading too much of the body weight across the two muscles, and I really make sure that I'm driving into that muscle. So how, how I will do that is, let me move this out of the way, is I like to take my far side leg, throw it over here, and slowly find a range of motion and it's funny because if, if you're helping somebody do this for the first time and when they hit that medial glute piriformis or the outside of your hip and glute, this, they don't have this look on their face. <laughs> it's more like, so I'll just kind of roll away at that muscle there. See, I need this so it's a little bit painful. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of roll my body over and now, this is my kickstand, or my motor. So I use this leg on top to drive myself up and down on the foam roller. And I use my bottom elbow to support myself so my spine's in alignment. And I will just dig into that muscle until I feel that painful sensation start to dull. Once I feel that, 
I'll switch over to the other side and hit the other side. In order to keep a pretty smooth transition, I'll go from the glutes to my hamstrings, okay, and then I'll roll over to my IT band. So let's just go to the IT band because this is where most of you are going to start to dislike me and foam rolling. <laughs> if you've ever foam rolled before um, and you've hit those IT bands, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I promise you this, I'll make you this promise. If you roll, and you roll consistently, if you roll lightly before your workouts and heavily after your workouts, I mean, just commit the time, right? You've already invested the time and effort to do your workout, your hike, your run, your whatever it is. Continue investing that time in the rehabilitation of the muscle. When we're working out, we're damaging the muscles. We're tearing them. We're filling them full of lactic acid and bad, wasteful blood, right? So we gotta get that stuff out of there. That's why you're sore for so many days after a workout if you're not used to it. This is your ticket. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this close to you side, leg, all right? I'm gonna start right about mid-thigh. I'm gonna kick this leg over like I did before. Boop, right there. And that's gonna be my motor. That's gonna push and pull me up and down this foam roller. Now, I do this a lot. So my IT bands, they don't ever give me a problem. This doesn't really hurt. It's not super comfortable, um, at least for the first three or four revolutions, but um, you'll get, <laughs> get used to it. Give it time. Like I said, you can also create or relieve pressure with this leg. So I can lift myself up with this leg, right? Or I can take it off and really grind in there. I would suggest if this isn't very familiar with you, to use that leg to relieve a little bit of the pressure, okay? And as you're going up and down that muscle, just start pivoting your body. So I would bring my hips forward to start hitting a different angle on that muscle and then I tee it. Going from there, I can flip right over and hit the quad. If you've never rolled your quads, you're in for quite an experience here. So my knee is still my kickstand. My elbow is still here keeping my spine in a neutral position, all right? And I'm using this hand to just help balance and guide this progression. Just like all the rest of the rolling, we're going to rotate our bodies, okay, left or right, to really work that entire muscle. The next little part that I like to attack is going to be the hip flexors. Your hip flexors do a ton. And that's going to be for a whole another wild skills, but your hip flexors are responsible for so much for stability, for, you know, the quick movement of your legs. They also resist energy. Um, they help with your balance. And I'll tell you what, if you've ever experienced any kind of dysfunction in your hip flexors, uh, life is not that enjoyable. So, you can use the same roller, all right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay on my stomach or I'm gonna be belly down just like I was to roll my quad. The difference is I'm gonna hit this spot right here, okay? Just below the waist, but just above the leg. There's about a six inch spot that will tell you right away whether it has dysfunction in it. Same setup. I've got my kickstand, I've got my leg long here, and I'm going to just move myself about six inches back and forth, that's it, you'll know as soon as you find it, and I'm going to breathe. I'm going to use my breath to keep myself sane because it's probably going to be very uncomfortable if you've never done this before. Again, I would suggest a, a very soft open cell foam roller, um, especially in this area here. And then as you acclimate to it, as your muscles start to develop um, more flexibility and they're more supple, meaning that they're, they're not knotty and ropey, then you can move to a little bit harder, stiffer foam roller like this. Or you can get real crazy and use one of these closed cell density trigger point balls. So let's talk about this next. Put this one away. So, this guy right here is pretty awesome. When I get done with a run, 
Um, I like to, I've never really had calf issues, but I know that a lot of our clients do, and I know that a lot of runners will have you know, highly fatigued calves, especially if you're trail running, especially in the western states, right? So what I like to do is put this on the floor, and I just set the center of my calf on it. Hopefully you can see that. Again, I use my hands to stabilize my body, and this will also give me the ability to bring a little bit of the resistance away from that trigger point ball, because this will light you on fire. <laughs> so what I'm doing here, I just start with a simple side to side. And I just allow my muscle to be introduced to the sensation, to the, mu to the movement of the trigger point ball. And I just start kind of pushing around the muscle and the blood. As that sensation, like I can feel a little bit of ropiness um, in that muscle, because I haven't done this for a couple days. As the, the, the ropiness or the knotty feeling starts to go away, I'll start moving not only side to side, but I'll also start rolling the length of my calf. So I'll do like 20 or 30 of these, and I'll rotate or move my leg in a counterclockwise motion for those reps, and I'll switch, and I'll go to the other, and spend the time. You know, if, you, if you've got the time, do 50 of them. The, the more you roll, and the more dysfunction and, and adhesion that you get out of the muscles, the more they're gonna love you, and the more they're gonna pay you back when you really need them. So, um, there's all different kinds and sizes. There's even this little guy here, and this one is really good for the same thing. So, we can put that under the calf, right? And we can use it the same way we use that ball. And we can roll that muscle out, all right? And try to get rid of all that dysfunction. And what I like to say, and I use it for myself and all of our clients, is as soon as that pain goes away and it starts becoming, you have a numb sensation in the muscle, you're done. There's not a lot of science to it. Dysfunction, adhesions of that fascia that tighten up, it's a, it creates, it's, it's a painful experience to roll that out. But with time and with patience and dedication to it, it's going to go away and you're going to feel a lot better and you'll thank me for it. <laughs> so um, I really appreciate you guys checking in and uh, kind of slowing things down a little bit here. This is one of the more important aspects of, of training, and I believe, you know, in my opinion, that it gets overlooked quite a bit. So um, I'm really happy that we've got so many different options and versions of foam rollers and ways to get rid of all of that myofascial tension and adhesions. Um, you know, so a few things to take out of this would be, one, realize that when we're exercising and moving, we're doing damage to the soft tissue and to the muscle, we're bundling it up, we're binding it up, we're tying knots, right, in that piece of um, resistance band. Two, don't jump right into the deep end. When you learn how to swim, you typically go in the shallow end and wade around a little bit. You put your hands up on the side of the pool and you make a lap, right, and then you start taking these short little trips. So let's say that this, the softer foam roller, is your short trip, all right? And before you jump in the deep end, get really used to and acclimated with this guy. Because if you don't and you jump right in, you're probably not going to like it and chances are we as human beings, we don't like to go to the discomfort all the time, right? We'd rather go, oh, it's not as bad, let's go this route. Um, it burned really bad last time, it hurt really bad, it was, you know, fill in the blank. Let's try to avoid that this time. So make your progression like everything else. Um, start with the softer foam roller, and then go up in rigidity after that. Drink lots of water, and make sure that you're using your body in a functional manner so we can avoid any unnecessary adhesions um, and damage as far as that goes. So, I really appreciate you guys checking in and uh, following along. I hope this works for you. If you ever have any questions, I'd be more than happy to help answer them for you at elevationfitnesstraining.com. Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and we'll see you next time.